winter beach fishing session. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne. It's a wonderful afternoon in winter, so I've come down to the beach with a few pilchards. I'm gonna see if I can grab a few worms and catch some fish, and I'm gonna show you everything that I'm doing. If this content's being helpful to your fishing, make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Let's start fishing. So I've got my stocking here. I don't put these on my legs. <laughs> well, I'm just basically getting my stocking so that I can form a little pouch at the end. And I'm going to grab some pilchards out of my little bag here. They're still pretty frozen, these pilchards. I normally like to use four or five, I guess. Um, so I put them head, head down into the end of the stocking. And I'll pull that up over there like that. And that's my beach worming bait. So I've come down here this afternoon. The tide's actually halfway in and it's a fairly big high tide tonight. Ideally I'd like to catch a couple of worms but it's already three hours in which is normally well past the best time to go beach worming. And also I've noticed that the whole beach is really very steep. It's got quite a steep edge on it. There's a little bit of a flat section here. I'm hoping I can pull a couple of worms. If I can't, well then I'm just going to fish purely with pilchards. I still expect to catch fish but it would be really nice to get some worms as well. So I'm just gonna wander down and hopefully there's some worms there. Normally it takes a minute or two for the scent to get in the water and attract the worms. And sometimes worms are higher up the beach, lower down the beach. You really just have to have a look and see if there's any here. I haven't wormed here for a couple of weeks at least. So I can't say whether there are any gonna be any worms or not and also considering the tide as well. But really, I only need two or three to be able to catch, you know, to have a few casts and catch some fish. So in that, in that first couple of waves, I haven't seen anything. I mean, it's most likely you're, you're gonna find them down the bottom if there's any here, but... And this edge is really quite... The waves are hitting it and smashing it and washing up and down and making it a little bit interesting. Mm. Very few options on the beach here for worming this afternoon. So if I do see a worm, I'll need to get my timing right to catch it. I haven't seen a single worm so far, but I saw something wiggling in the water. Look at that. I'm not quite sure what sort of fish that is. It's not a baby flathead. I don't know what it is. Look at it. Some sort of stargazer. Caught it, I thought it was a crab. Oh. Miracle. I think it's a worm. Oh, it's a tiny little worm. Let's see if I can get an opportunity to grab it in between the waves before the next wave comes. Where is he? I've only seen one worm in about the last six or seven minutes. I could get one bait out of that. It might catch me a fish. I've abandoned trying to catch some worms. I gave it maybe six or seven minutes. I saw nothing. At the last minute, I saw one tiny little worm which I caught. But the conditions, obviously, sometimes you can get them even though it's three hours with the tide in. But looks really bad for that and I couldn't see hardly anything. So I've managed to, the little baby worm I caught, I've managed to put him on the hook. He was quite skinny. So I had to thread it carefully to put it on the hook. But I've got a good bait out of the worm. And I do have one other small piece. You can see here, I do have one other small piece. That's about 10 centimetres long. Amazingly, out of that one little baby worm, I'm gonna get two baits. So I've got a, a worm on a top hook I've got, and then I've got a half pilchard down the bottom. So I will use those two worm baits and then I'll, I don't have any choice, just got to fish with the pilchards after that. And if I catch something then I can, I've got the option of filleting a fish and using that for bait as well. I've got a pretty good looking gutter just out here. 
There's a sandbar on either side. You can see the white water to my left. And there's a nice deep channel to the right of this white water. So I'm aiming to cast right on the edge of where the white water meets the channel and see if there's anything sniffing around and feeding out there. Just check my drag. My drag was done up really tight from when I was drummer fishing the other day because you can't give drummer an inch. Otherwise they'll reef you. So I was a little bit tight. Alrighty, let's see how we go. I'm reasonably happy with where that landed. Let's see how long it takes to get a bite. It's um, quarter to four in the afternoon. I was a little bit pressed for time today, so I just opted to fish at this time, but in some of my recent beach fishing sessions, I've just had some fantastic catches of fish in the middle of the day. So I'm actually not gonna stay until dark, just gonna fish for a little while. Uh, I do have a run-in tide. High tide tonight is at 6.30. It's pretty much fully dark at 5.30. So it's high tide about an hour or so after dark, but I've just got the run-in tide now. And I think tonight it's about a 1.7 metre tide. Just giving this a little tug there. I'm fishing with 20 pound line on this outfit. My beach fishing rod is 12 feet long. And this reel is a Socorro SW6000. Had a bite, actually had a bite, that's good. Yeah, I got him. What have I got? I don't think it's a salmon. Yeah, it is. It jumped. So that was my first cast. It took, um, I don't know, maybe it took five minutes or so. Just over five minutes to get a bite, which is pretty slow <laughs> for normal. We got a lovely little salmon here, so. And he's taken the pilchard bait. You can see my worm bait is still intact. So I'll be keeping this guy. I've still got my rod rigged with the soft plastic that I had the other day in the other video. You can see that one there, it looks very much like a mullet with a paddle tail. So I'm actually just going to have a couple of flicks before I chuck another bait out, I've just got that salmon. But why not, I'll have a couple of flicks with the plastic, see if anything likes to take it. The other day I really only had the one hit, I had a really big hit that just bit me off and took the whole plastic. It was either a really big tailor or a shark. That's I don't know what else would be out here with super razor sharp teeth. I've just had six quick flicks with the plastic, landed in some pretty good water, uh, but I didn't have any touches, so I'm just gonna go back to the bait. I'll have another go with the plastic a little bit later. I put up a video with my Thai fish cakes recipe last week on YouTube, lots of you have watched it. I had heaps and heaps of comments. Some people are a little bit 
negative about eating Australian salmon or what the Kiwis call kawai. But, you know, I used to be like that. I caught hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of salmon off the rocks, off the beach, always threw them back. But I've completely changed my mind, not just because we catch plenty of them here, but they are really delicious. So I challenge you, you might be one of those people who just says, there's no way I'd eat salmon. Just bleed one, take it home, try making fish cakes or just eat it straight. We often cook the salmon just in a beer batter. It's fantastic, really beautiful with a light beer batter or some egg and panko breadcrumbs. It's really worth catching. I used to catch quite a few in Sydney on the northern beaches. In particular, I found Warrywood and Monaval beaches were very good for salmon. But that was kind of close to where I live, so I, I kind of majored in that area. So my first cast, this is only my second cast with bait. My first cast took about five minutes to get a fish. And this bait's in the water, been in the water for maybe three or four minutes at the moment. Oh, what happened then? I missed him. I think it's taken the pilchard bait. So I had a bite then, but I missed him. I'll see whether I've got the pilchards missing or the worm is missing. No way. Look at that, cleanly bitten off. So we know what that was. I was actually hoping I wasn't gonna get a tailor bite because I didn't bother with my wire trace setup. And I've only got a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. So that's, that was just a tailor bite, which is likely to happen more as I get closer to dark. That's when the tailor move in. So anyways, I put another hook on and uh, Hopefully the tailor don't annihilate me again. Wasn't necessarily expecting to get tailor bites this early in the afternoon. But, yeah, so we'll see what happens, whether I get bitten off again or maybe I jag one, it doesn't get the line in its mouth. I don't think I've got any gang hooks with me which would eliminate that problem as well. Gang tooks are great. I really like gang tooks. And you'll still catch brim and other species of fish on gang tooks, even though they're relatively large. All right, let's see how we go. I'm gonna come up here so that you don't get hit by a wave. <laughs> the sun is still up, although the clouds are starting to sink behind, sorry, not the clouds, the sun is starting to sink behind the sand dunes. I'm not casting very far out. Probably only maybe 30, 40 metres from the shore. When I fillet my Australian salmon, first of all, as I mentioned, you need to bleed them. But once I've taken the fillet off and I've removed the central bones, from the, the bones from the middle of the fillet, I actually cut the fillet in half long ways and completely remove that centre bloodline because when you even though you bleed a salmon, if you take the whole fillet off, you'll still see quite a red section down the middle of the fillet. I just cut that out so that I've got pure flesh. I remove all of that. It's just nicer. I mean, I'm not that fussy if there's a little bit left on there, but that's normally what I do. Oh, I got him this time. All right. That was a typical salmon type bite. And it's tracking sideways in the water, which is pretty common for salmon to do.
So once again, the worm bait was left alone. Even though salmon love worms. Look, I've actually got, this guy has both the, um, the keeper hook and the main hook are both in his mouth. You can see that's the small keeper hook there and the bigger hook's actually in there. I'll just remove it while you're watching. Ouch, I don't want, I want to hold onto him tight because if he shakes his head around, I don't want to get a hook in my finger. You can see the two hooks there. So I'll put a little bit more pilchard on, chuck it back out again. come up out of the wave zone because the, the shadows are starting to come over might start to get more bites what time is it I've been fishing for half an hour I've had three casts with bait I've had a, I've landed two fish and been bitten off by a tailor the three times I used bait and I had half a dozen casts with a soft plastic which looks like a little mullet um, and I had no hits or anything with that. Come on. So what have I got this time? Is it another salmon or have I got a tailor this time? It's going to pull it in quick. Get it in here real quick. Here it comes. Yeah, here it comes. Up we go. Oh! Ha 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 ha. There you go, look at that, Mr. Brim. What a beautiful specimen. Oh, sand in the face. Beautiful specimen of a nice, really silvery brim, surf brim. So that guy, that guy took the pilchard. Ah, oh, yeah, it's just pretty, pretty relaxing, pretty enjoyable. Certainly not boring. It's um, Winter time, I'm not really that, I mean look, there's not strong wind. If it was blowing a gale, I'd need a nice warm jacket on, but, but yeah, certainly lovely to be down here. I'm really just lobbing my bait. On that little bit of white water, there's a, there's a, um, a bit of a deep trench right on the edge. And as the tide comes in, that's filling up, but you've got a nice little bit of wash there. You see, I'm not fishing over to my right. You can see it's all green water. There's no waves breaking there. See, it's deep and green. I think if I cast my bait out there, I'm still obviously potentially going to catch a fish, but on the edge of this white water is much better. I don't want to be right up in the shallows, but I want to be on the edge of where the, the shallow water drops off into the deep water. And that last cast produced a brim, which was good. So we'll wait and see. Yep, gotcha. I think. I was getting some, I was getting some pretty small nibbles then. You can see my pilchard bait's kind of been a bit mangled up. I was getting these tiny little bites. I have a half hitch around here, so I've just got to take it off. Feed the seagulls with the, um, with the scraps. I was getting some tiny little nibbles, but then I had a couple of slightly better bites. I have a feeling it was probably another brim. Yeah, got him. That was interesting because I had these tiny little bites. And then whack, whack. It's fighting like a salmon.
Oh, look at this. I've got a salmon on the top on a worm. So we've got that salmon that's taken the worm bait. And then down below, there is a flathead, a flathead that's taken the pilchard. Let this little guy go. That cast was just a tiny little lob, just in this little gutter, this little, this little trench right on the shore. I'm getting a bite already. Oh man. I wasn't ready for that. I think I need to wind in and reload. This one's a little bit larger than the last one. It took the pilchard again. The last one I caught on a worm, um, but this one took the pilchard. And really, I, I'm just flicking it hardly, hardly far out at all. So he's got both, he's got both hooks in him. The keeper hook is kind of right in the corner yeah, there's the main hook, so the main hook wasn't really in that much. And there's that little keeper hook on the side. Just got him in the side of the mouth. Beautiful. Nothing, another amazing fish. Just stunning. I'm gonna, there's obviously fish out there, so I'm getting bites every single cast with bait. So I'm gonna try with this plastic again. Oh, yep, got one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Woohoo. <laughs> 
Oh, it's really hit it really hard. Oh. <laughs> he got off just near the shore, but that was exciting. He whacked it really hard. So, man, I thought I had that first one on the plastic. Anyway, back out there. I had a couple of quick flicks with the soft plastic again, hooked a really nice fish on my first cast. And I dropped it close to shore. Um, so I'm back to bait again. So far I've landed five fish on bait, or six if you include the little flathead. And I've had one hook up on the soft plastic. Now admittedly, I could try different colours. I've just used that one plastic that looks like a little mullet which looks fantastic, it's got a lovely paddle tail. Um, I do have some different ones in my bag, but I'm content just to fish with this bait and have a flick with that, so. I don't think I've got one. I had a few nibbles, a bit of a small bite then. You can see my two hooks are kind of, something's bitten the bottom part, it's missed that bottom hook. There's the keeper hook in the top. I've had a great short session down at the beach here. Caught a few different species of fish. Make sure that you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell if it's been helpful. And I'll be coming back at you with another video next Saturday. I'll see you then.